westward the hopes, the dreams of men have always gone venturing. So let us follow the course of the sun to the uttermost western land bounds of America, and in the romantic Pacific Northwest find the land of the singing waters. After an hour's motor ride from the modern city of Portland, Oregon, the mountains open to receive us. We enter the Grand Canyon of the Columbia River, where rolls the Oregon. This region was first explored by Lewis and Clark over 125 years ago, and they were led across the trackless continent by Sacagawea, the bird woman, a young Indian mother with her papoose on her back. The white men found many tribes of Indians dwelling here who told them of strange sounds and murmurings which seemed to come from the dark canyons. They said these were the spirits of their departed ones. Surely this is but a legend, a superstition. But as we gaze down into the velvet depths of the gorge and behold the far-flung panorama of castellated walls, we listen and seem to hear faint murmurings. Descending to the river over a road of romantic beauty and spectacular engineering, the gay, bright laughter of this waterfall enchants us. Cold gusts of wind issuing from the canyons bring the sound of many voices singing. Rushing pell-mell over the brink or falling gently among the rocks and ferns, a musical effect is created by these dancing, glistening waters. Close at hand, another stream, refreshing with the chill of newly melted snow, comes gaily down the mountainside and adds its voice to the chorus. Joaquina it is called, which in the nomenclature of the Indian means the most beautiful. But is it really? A Joaquina has a rival and with a voice gentle and tremulous. Multnomah Falls, the queen, I think, of them all. And to come under its spell, we follow a trail through all the green witchery of the Oregon underwoods and find it a dainty cataract of almost unbearable beauty, falling airily down like a silver ribbon unwinding against the cliff. We stop at Oneonta Gorge, to listen. And if it is a hot day, I invite you into the green and rugged secrecy of this cool, mysterious canyon with its protesting little stream disputing every step of your way. Aha, uh -huh, and another voice is added, big, thundering and commanding. It is the voice of utility and transportation, drowning out for a moment the music of the streams and waterfall. But as the canyon is restored again to its immemorial silence, the call of another cascade is heard just around the bend. Hostail Fall, shouting and jumping recklessly down into its deep pool. The roar of its tumbling, re-echoing high among the rocky crags. And here comes another flashing into view. Elowa Falls, hung like a filmy scarf on the shoulder of the mountain, joins in to swell the whole into a great chorus of singing water. Something in this strange land always beckons us on. The domes, cathedrals, and the towers of the lofty canyon walls. They had to bite a piece of the cliff out here to fold the road around the mountainside. Without any sensation of grade, we glide over this magnificent highway paved like a ballroom floor, and every turn in the road brings new delights, and always in sight is the lordly Columbia, winding its way through the Cascade Mountains to the Pacific, which is the river's eternity. And here the fisherman catches the abundant salmon quite lazily. He just lets them swim into these traps, and then the great wheel, propelled by the current, lifts the fish up and neatly deposits them onto this barge. Pretty soft fishing, I'll say.
On we go, adventuring into fairyland. Every new vista which the road discloses fills us with the excitement of a discoverer. Swinging down by the river again, we enter for a moment into a national forest. Uncle Sam has preserved these wilderness areas just as the Indians left them. The green canopies and the shadowy mysteries of nature's cathedrals are sanctuaries for wild animals, wildflowers, and wild waters. And for us, who like fugitives have fled from all the debasements of the city's noise and dirt, from taxicabs and subways, nightclubs and jazz, and all the cluttering conveniences of civilization. Here the Columbia frets and storms over the Cascade Rapids. The engineer dug his way into the very heart of this mountain, but daylighted his dark tunnel with windows chiseled out of the canyon wall. Like little bugs darting here and there, these busy cars hasten over this astonishing road, which is flung like a lariat around the shoulders of the Bold River Hill. As we return to the city, the shadows crowd round our automobile and lengthen in the valley. A twilight, tranquil and lingering, and the sorcery of the sunset. The day dies upon a golden bed. Tomorrow we shall be many miles away, but always wistful voices shall be calling us back to the land of the singing water. Hey.